Hi everyone, I'm Tomer Cohen. I work at Wix.com, currently leading the, uh, the R&D security team. Uh, me and my team are responsible for uh, all Wix production systems, operations, security, uh, including infrastructure and application, and uh, practically everything. Um, and I'm here to, uh, to talk about how to create a botnet by abusing Chrome extensions or browser extensions in general. So I'm going to start with my personal experience with bots. The first challenge that me and my team had, to, had with bots was uh, on April 2016. It was a regular day in the office uh, when suddenly the sign-up graph... Uh, uh, just a second... Okay, I'm good. So, suddenly the sign up graph, which uh, uh, indicates that a lot of users, uh, new users sign up to Wix, uh, had a dramatic uh, increase. Now, we're familiar with ca this kind of attack, so we checked and we saw that the requests are not originated in one address or one country, but in a lot of uh, sources, and this is what we call a bot attack. Now, a word about bots. So, According to Imperva, bots, makes the, uh, bots make the majority of the traffic uh, on the internet today and most of the bots are bad bots and most of the bad bots are impersonators. Impersonators are bots that come to uh, web applications and fake, uh, real, and, and fa fake the activity of uh, real humans. Uh, this causes a lot of headaches to uh, internet companies because this, uh, these bots, they are very hard to distinguish between these bots and, uh, and, and legit traffic. Yeah, we were there. Okay, so after, uh, after seeing the, uh, I'm saying that we are under a bot attack, we started to investigate and we saw three things. The first thing uh, that we saw is that most of the increase is originated in Latin America uh, countries and all these clients come with Chrome browser. Now this was weird and we kept investigating. The next thing that we saw, we've noticed, is that for some reason the sign up requests to our uh, server come from a frame, a Wix iframe, a frame that uh, is loading Wix sign up form from within Facebook. For some reason, we didn't know yet uh, what was the reason for that. We'll see in a second. The third thing that we've noticed is that um, now, just a, a word about Wix. Wix is a is a, a is a website creation platform. Everyone can come and uh, create their own website for free. So what we've noticed is that these uh, uh, species users they sign up to uh, Wix, to a new account, and then only 10 seconds after the sign up event we see that they publish a new Wix website. Now this is obviously weird because people don't tend to design their website uh, in 10 seconds and publish it. So now we had a pattern we knew what to look for, so we went to one of uh, uh, these uh, accounts and saw this, the website that was published. And this was the, the website that was published in all these accounts. And here it is in English. Uh, this page says that um, if you want to see who viewed your uh, profile on Facebook, the same old scam, you can uh, click on start and download, uh, uh, download a Chrome extension for doing that. Now if we click start, we actually get to the real original Google Web Store and see this extension uh, called Viad30 something. So we we had we started we understand we understood that uh, there is connection between the bot attack that we are experiencing and this uh, this ex malicious extension or this extension at the time. So we start investigating what's inside the extension. It was very hard because the code was highly obfuscated. We got help from a lot of guys, including Perimeter X. It's a bot uh, protection uh, uh, um, company that we work with. And this is what we found. This is what the extension does. Firstly, it injects code into Facebook tabs. Now, Chrome extensions with proper permissions 
have the ability to inject JavaScript code to any open tab by the user and also to control all tabs, create new tabs and everything. Um, in this case, the attackers used it to inject code into the Facebook tab. Why Facebook tab? I guess because everyone is on it and there are other reasons that we'll see in a second. The next thing uh, the extension does is open a Wix iframe inside using the, the injected code to Facebook. Inside Facebook, uh, it opens a frame and loads Wix signup form. And from this frame, from within the thread frame, it sends the signup request to our server. Now, why? My question here is why would they need to open a frame? Why wouldn't they just inject the code and send the signup request to Wix? Uh, Chrome extensions are not enforced uh, uh, with the uh, uh, same origin policy. They can send a request from Facebook to Wix. Now the answer here is that, is that uh, here in Wix we, ha we do have bot protection mechanisms uh, and it has some, uh, uh, some features. So if the attacker just, if we just send the sign up form from just any tab, this will fail because you don't have the right cookies, headers, tokens, whatever that you need to fetch from the sign up form before you send the actual sign up request. However, if you somehow uh, open a, a frame with the sign-up form, like in our case, inside Facebook, and you send the sign-up request from within this frame, it succeeds. So the attackers actually did that to bypass our bot protection mechanisms because they knew that they w wouldn't be able to send the request straight from other tabs. They opened the frame. Now I remind you that this frame is transparent and the victim user does not notice anything while he sign up to Wix and publish a new website. Okay, let's go back to the extensions uh, course of action. The, uh, we already saw that it injects code to Facebook tab and then it sign ups uh, to Wix. Next thing it does, it's like we saw, it's, it's, it formed the account uh, in, uh, it created in Wix, it publishes a new Wix website. Now all these websites lead to the same page, the attack page that we saw earlier. Um, now what it does, it takes the newly created uh, website, the URL of the, web, the Wix website that, that was created, and send it using Facebook messages to all the victim's friends on Facebook. This is how the malware is distributed. Lastly, these guys were r rude enough to grab the victim's uh, Google authorization token and submit a, a review in the Google Chrome, ext uh, Chrome extension web store of five stars. So they have really good reputation for their malicious extension. Cool. Now my next question is why would this attacker even need Wix uh, on the way? I mean, why wouldn't he just inject the code to Facebook and then use Facebook Messenger to distribute uh, the URL of his attack page? I mean, he has already an attack page. Why would he need Wix on the way? So the answer here is that Wix was used um, to distribute a bot. Um, it, Wix, Wix was actually here a supplier of disposable URLs. I mean, um, every victim that uh, that is is infected uh, creates a new website, a new U, a new attack URL that leads to Wix, and then it was much harder to Facebook to detect this attack because all the URLs were different. There was there wasn't a, a common, a, a popular URL, a malicious URL that, that was sent in these requests. So the attacker basically used Wix reputation in order to distribute his malware. And what we have discussed so far um, is only the infection phase of this, attack, of, of this attack. Obviously these bots are then used for a lot of uh, things that they, that they all uh, uh, lead to the same result, money for the bot masters. So after they infect all these bots uh, using Wix or other platforms, they can use them later, these bots. They have a command and control for these bots, we'll see in, in a second. They can send, uh, the, uh, they can run DDoS attacks and spam um, and run other, other attacks. They can also put these bots for rent and then gain money for, this for these attacks as a service.
We just saw a campaign of uh, infection, uh, bot infection using Chrome extensions. Let's see another one. So we at Twix stopped, it, it took us some time, but we stopped this attack. And two months later, there were news about a new attack. Uh, and this is how it looked like. It says, Facebook comment tagging malware spreading via Google Chrome. If you receive a Facebook notification regarding a friend tagging you, be very cautious about it. Um, now this uh, this attack was uh, was called was named "Tag Me If You Can" by uh, uh, Kaspersky Labs researcher Idon Aor. And when I read his report, his very detailed report, I knew that it were the same attackers that attacked Twix two months before. How did I know? Let's see how this attack worked. So first, a victim gets a notification on Facebook saying that uh, as, as some friend of his of him tagged him in a, in a comment. When the victim clicks this notification, uh, after a small warning of Facebook saying that you're going out of Facebook, a JSE file is immediately downloaded to the victim's browser. Now, J J JSE files are uh, act like executable uh, in window on all Windows machines. So after, if the victim clicks on this JSE file, a malware is running, causing Google Chrome to crash. Then it copies the Google Chrome process file, the exe file, and create a new Chrome exe file with a Chrome extension installed on it. This is a malicious extension, similar to what we saw before in Wix. After the Chrome is reopened, the extension is uploading a new instance of the JSE file to the victim's Google Drive. Then it takes the URL of the newly uploaded uh, file and sends this URL using fa Facebook uh, API uh, uh, create notifications with tagging of all the friends of the victim. One of the victim's friends sees the notification and the whole thing runs again and we've got exponential growth infection process. Now how did these guys manage to uh, create a notification on Facebook that lead to a download of a JSE file? That's a good question, I'm sure you're all asking yourselves that. Uh, but it's too, it's, it's too long for, for this lecture, so you can find more, uh, more details in this uh, talks white paper or in Don uh, uh report about the tag me if you can attack. Now this, um, I knew that these were the, sh the same attackers because there is a, 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 a very strong pattern here in these both attacks uh, and this is the pattern. It always starts with the user clicking on Facebook on something. Next thing that happens is that somehow an extension is installed on his browser. In the Wix attack it was from the Google Web Store <coughs> Sorry, in the Facebook attack, it was using an executable JSE file. After the extension is, is installed, somehow a new payload of the a new, a new instance of the malicious payload is, is created. It can be a Wix website leading to the attack page or just a JSE file that was upload to, uploaded to the Google Drive. Unless the extension takes the URL of the newly created instance and send it somehow in messages or comments, notifications uh, to all the Facebook friends, one of the friends clicking it and then we got the whole thing running again. Now these two, two attacks had more common and uh, more mutual uh, uh, effects. Uh, uh, um, for example, there were a lot of code snippets that were similar and also uh, the attackers used the same domains. So it clearly was the same attacker. Um, now, I want to say that the companies that were abused in these two campaigns are not minor companies, right? This magical bot somehow comes and defeats Facebook, Google and Wix.com uh, uh, bot protection services and all the services all, all that, that we were talking about, Facebook messaging, Google Drive, upload and everything has uh, um, has bot protection mechanisms in place. So why common bots fail to bypass these mechanisms and our bot succeeds? So let's ask ourselves for a second, what makes a good bot? So the goal of a good bot is actually to look 
like human, right? The bot want the bot want uh, 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 the website that he's visiting to think that he is a human that is sitting on a computer and surfing the internet using a web browser, right? So the first thing that, ha that this bot has to cope with is JavaScript challenges. Now th this is a lot of uh, this is a, a, a practical a known practice in detecting bots. You give them the right JavaScript calculation and they cannot uh, cope with it. In our case, our bot is actually running inside Chrome. So you can challenge it with any JavaScript that you want and he will cope with it successfully. Great. All right, so the second thing here is what I call human context. Um, human context is, is to look to look like a human when you come to do uh, uh, some action. For example, you don't sign up to Wix or any other service before you pass through the sign up form, right? I mean, a, a, a bot that sends, sends a, requ a request, a sign up request straight to the server is not a good bot. Now, in here we have the ability in our bot to enter inside the context of the user because Chrome extensions has the ability to inject JavaScript code into active user tabs. So if I'm sur sur surfing Facebook, the extension can inject JavaScript code into Facebook that will send the Facebook messages from within the Facebook window. And this way, he, uh, uh, he has a lot of powers in mimicking the, uh, the regular, the, the human behavior. This makes browser extensions the perfect bot. It can run in the context of a user and it can cope with any JavaScript. To understand the full capabilities of such extension, let's have a look at the manifest file of the extension, the malicious extensions we just saw attacking Wix. So this is the manifest file of this extension. You can see in the red frame uh, uh, that uh, the name of the extension, via 30 it's a name of already of extension that was already exist in the web store. I guess that the attackers understood that this way uh, they can easily bypass the Google screening process to Google Web Store. Now, what we see here under the permission section is this is the the most important uh, uh, permission of this extension. It allows the extension to run a cross-origin uh, request to any, uh, to any destination it wants. And it also gives that this extension the ability to inject JavaScript code into all the tabs. What else? So we can also snatch the, uh, the, the user, the victim's cookies. Uh, this, by the way, includes HTTP-only cookies. And what else do we see here? There's a background script. Now, the, the background script runs all the time in the background. And it doesn't matter where, what tab you walk on. And let's have a look at the background script of this extension. This is actually the command and control system of this extension. Why? Let's see what it does. First, it adds a listener uh, to to any tab that is updated. Any tab that is updated runs this code. It goes to uh, the attacker's server, download a file called data.js. This file uh, includes the commands for the bot. Then it takes this, uh, the, the, uh, it takes data.js and executes it using tabs execute script on the tab that was updated. Now, this is very important because it allows the attacker full flexibility with his bots. His bot is not a static, it not, does not have static logic. I mean, it's not doing the same all the time. Every time the attacker wants to change the behavior of the bot, he is able to do it. For example, after in the Wix attack, after we know we've noticed that we that there are websites that are published only 10 seconds after the sign up event, we started unpublish uh, uh, websites that were uh, that, that were uh, uh, um, that, that had this behavior, uh, and it stopped the attack for about an half, a half an hour. And after half an hour, the attacker, using that, changed the logic, the logic of the bot. And from this, from this point, bots use randomized timeout between the sign-up event and the site publish. Also, I can. I can create a, a, a script 
sh which is tailored for each uh, active tab. So if I'm, if I'm on Facebook, I can send commands that send Facebook messages. If I'm on Google Drive, I can send commands that upload files to Google Drive. Great, so we know that, we now know that uh, uh, um, extensions, browser extensions are very powerful tools for bot masters. But these campaigns that you just saw are very complicated and I want to ask you guys how can we make it easier? Um, because smuggling uh, an extension to Google Web Store and convincing uh, victims to install this extension or running exe, JC files or exe on, uh, on, on, on victims' devices is very hard and demands quite a lot of effort. I want to think for a second how we make, how can we make it easier? So the thing here is that in order to get the abilities of uh, an extension, we only have to have the ability to run execute JavaScript in the context of the extension. Um, and for this we can go to the same old vulnerability we all know and love, XSS. Um, now XSS in extension is not a good, is not new thing. I mean guys have shown it in Black Hat in 2012. Um, but I want to share with you today, firstly to show you that there are still extensions that are vulnerable. Secondly to show you to share with you the idea of using these vulnerabilities in order to form a botnet. Um, the first example is the Adobe, Acro uh, Adobe Acrobat extension XSS. Um, it allows uh, users to convert any page, any web page to a PDF file. Now, in January 2016, while it had 30 million installations, this is a crazy number, um, Six days, uh, what, what they did is, is they automatically installed their extensions on all devices that had uh, Adobe uh, Acrobat installed on them. And only six days after this, uh, a Google Project Zero researcher, Tavis Omendi, found an access vulnerability in this extension. Um, this is his report. And inside the report, you can see a POC of the exploitation code. And what we see here. Uh, is basically that there is a page called frame.html that if we send to it a payload in a parameter, he will execute it. And this is how it looks from the frame side. Uh, it's pretty, pretty straightforward XSS. Here's our payload in request.message. It goes to str status and then from there uh, as HTML to the title of the page. The problem here is it's too easy. It's that easy that actually CSP content security policy uh, blocks it because it's an inline script. Now, a word about CSP. Um, in 2014, Google uh, enforced CSP con default con content security policy on all, on all extensions. This was a very important move, move because it saved us from a horror scenario of XSS in extensions. And what it does, it prevents common JavaScript injection, injections like inline scripts, uh, eval functions, and you can only uh, load scripts for whitelist uh, so, uh, sources, whitelisted sources. So the problem is he, here is, is that CSP is a generic policy and developers that tend to be very creative in the way they create XSS in their software. And let's see another example. So I want to show you the AVG web tune-up extension. Uh, it aims to protect users when surfing the internet, when in fact it has XSS and actually allow hacking this user. Allowed, this, uh, this extension is, is, uh, is patched and I'm going to talk today about the vulnerable version of it. Um, the same guy, Tavis Omendi from uh, Google Project Zero uh, found XSS in it. And in this case, CSP fails, and I want to show you how. I want to show you why. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll show a demo in which uh, there's an attack page. Now, we lo uh, there's a victim that comes to this attack page and open it, and this victim runs the AVG uh, extension on his browser, um, and this is why you see the extension there uh, listening on the attack page. 
that the, the extension injects JavaScript into the attack page, into any page, including our attack page, that adds a listener to uh, window messages. Now, our attack page, which we will see in a second, sends, use, use a window post message to send a, request, to send a message to the extension to the, in the same page. The extension, in turn, transfer our payload. Sorry, yeah, this is the payload. Uh, the post message and the, the content script in the attack page uh, they forward the, our payload using Chrome runtime send message to its background script. The background script of the extension has access to Chrome API and particularly to the Chrome's tabs, Chrome tabs uh, uh, API. And using the update function, uh, we can uh, update any tab with any URL that we choose in the original uh, message that we sent from the attack page. In our case, we will, use, we will use beef in order to hook just any tab of the, of the user, uh, for example, face, the Facebook tab. Um, yes. With the hook. So, just a second, one second. Let's show a little demo. One second. Okay, I'll show it here. Okay, I'll try to do it this way. It will be hard, but... Okay, what we see here is the attack page. I'm going to turn on, this is beef, command command system. You can see that there's nothing here, there are no bots right now. I'm going to turn on the uh, AVG extension. I do it with much caution because it's vulnerable. Uh, it's the vulnerable version of this extension. And here's a black hat. Uh, wh what we're going to see is an uh, attack on black hat page. Um, I'm going to refresh it to show you that there's nothing here. Now, I'm going to run the attack page, my exploitation page. And you can see that the blackhead page has a, a, there's an alert, and we can see that we have a new hook uh, on this tab. And you can see here that the, the beef.js file is downloaded from the attacker server. If I click OK, I can see here that the beef agent start to communicate with the CNC uh, uh, machine in here. And here we got the, uh, the beef bot on blacker.com. So, to sum up, we saw how we can hack extensions and run in the context of these extensions. And as I said before, my final goal is, create, is use these vulnerabilities, access vulnerabilities, in order to create uh, botnets. And this is how we can do it. Uh, uh, once we have the first victim that installed our bot, using B, for example, you can use, you, we can use him, uh, we can create an, an attack page, the attack page, URL of the attack page, and send this URL uh, using Facebook messages or other social means to all the f friends on Facebook of the victims. If they have the extension installed, the vulnerable extension, we will hack them uh, in the same way using our attack page and install beef on them. 
if they don't have the victim, the friends of the victim does not do, do not have the extension, we can always refer them to Google Web Store to download this great, great uh, antivirus tool and then hack it in the same way using our attack page XSS. Summing up, um, this is what we saw. So, browser extensions make great bots. We saw why. Um, we also saw that uh, as we speak, there are, and, uh, there are attackers that use Chrome ext extensions in order to, uh, to, co to create and control their botnets. Uh, we also saw that extensions still got XSS and CSP is not enough in our case because there are many ways to create XSS. And the same infection campaigns that we saw earlier in the weeks and Facebook attack can be achieved using, uh, by, by exploiting Chrome extensions, XSS vulnerabilities. If you have any questions about this talk, please approach me or you can catch me in this email. Thank you so much.